Okay, we're going to get started. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, my name is Colleen, uh, and I am the Genealogy and Community History Librarian here at the Aurora Public Library District. Um, and I'm very happy to introduce today Pauline Gamble. Um, she is the author of The Fox Beats uh, and Shark Tales of Pollution Fighter James F. Phillips and Animal Rights Warrior Stephen O. Hindi. So um, Ms. Gamble is going to be talking about a little bit about how she prepared to write the book, as well as some of the research that she found particularly rewarding. Um, so thank you so much for being here, Pauline, and I am going to hand it over to you. I'm just going to get your um, slides up and then you'll be all set. Good afternoon. <laughs> um, first, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Caitlin uh, Cullen, uh, the adult services librarian here for arranging for my presentation. And uh, she will also be showing the slides. Um, so uh, first I wanna wish everyone a belated uh, happy Earth Day. <laughs> and uh, although for all of us, every day is Earth Day. So we should celebrate it more than, <laughs> more than one day a year. Um, so uh, I'm happy to, to be here uh, to talk to you about the dual biography I wrote. Um, but first, I, I would like to um, acknowledge uh, some people in the audience. Uh, uh, Jennifer Howard, the uh, co-producer of the documentary uh, Legend of the Fox. Uh, she's uh, also associated with Northern Illinois University uh, with their video production and instructional design. Um, uh, department. Um, and I'd also like to thank uh, Gary Swick. He's the founding member of the Friends of the Fox River and current president of the organization. And they're uh, involved in uh, trying to save the, or the environment and the Fox River and the surrounding uh, environment. And uh, he's been active in that. He's the uh, current president of the organization. I'd like to thank uh, Janet Inick. In is that how I pronounce it correctly? <laughs> yeah, she's one of the, uh, she's a longtime uh, investigator with the Shark Organization. And uh, for those of you that are not aware, Shark, uh, it's an acronym for showing animals respect and kindness. Um, they go all over the country to investigate uh, instances of cruelty. In fact, uh, Steve Hendy, the founder of the organization, uh, just called me a short while ago, and he is, um, uh, investigating a, a, a rodeo that's occurring uh, in, in Illinois uh, today, and we'll probably be trying to take some video to show some of the uh, horrendous things that are done to the, the animals there. Um, now, um, I'd like to start off by showing you some two photos of, of, of Steve, of Jim Phillips and Steve Handy. These are uh, photos that from uh, their high school years. Uh, in fact, that's uh, Jim Phillips' uh, senior class photo. Uh, he, he, he went to the Oswego High School uh, here at Oswego, Illinois. And uh, uh, Steve Hendy attended the Harding High School in uh, St. Saint, Saint Paul, Minnesota. Um, now they look like you're just your innocent teenage boys, but uh, little did the public know <laughs> what it was in store for. Um, now, uh, before I continue, I would like to ask the uh, audience members uh, uh, who in the audience would, would crawl down a sewer hole and, and plug it up with uh, refuse in order to prevent it from uh, disgorging uh, pollution into a river or waterway. Do I have any volunteers? No? <laughs> okay. Uh, now, who in, the, who in the audience would go to a public meeting and take an electric prod with you. By the way, these are, these are electric prods uh, that are used in, in rodeos to make uh, a horse buck. Um, so I'm wondering if there's any volunteer in the audience that would be willing to, to use one. Uh, no, no volunteers. <laughs> well, Steve Handy had gone to a public meeting and asked the same question uh, of the audience. Uh, it's, anyone would volunteer to use it. And when no one did, he used it on himself and uh, it suffered the excruciating pain. Um, well, these are just two examples of, of 
the efforts that uh, both uh, Jim Phillips did. He was he called down the sewer to plug up uh, the sewer uh, from the Armour Dial Company that was polluting the Fox River. Um, and of course, as I said, Steve Hendy used the, the electric prod on, on himself. So these are some, crazy. some of the efforts that they were willing to, are willing, still willing to go to, at least Steve Hendy is still willing to go to, to, to bring attention to their causes. Um, now, I'd, I'd like to tell you just a little bit uh, about how I became aware of these, these two individuals. Uh, back in the, uh, 19, around 1999, I decided to take an early retirement from my, I was able to take, I should say, an early retirement from my job at the state of Illinois. Uh, and I returned to college to get a degree in, in environmental studies at, at, uh, at Northeastern Illinois University in Chicago. And as I was driving up uh, Lakeshore Drive one afternoon, now this was, in a, a, like I said, around 1999, I was going past the Shedd Aquarium uh, and they, there were some protesters uh, there that I noticed with their signs. They were protesting the death of some beluga whales that had died there recently at that time. Uh, as, as you may not know, they, they're, they're captured in the wild and, and brought to the shed to various aquariums and put in a small tank. And of course, uh, it's not exactly what I would call a very... <laughs> uh, a nice environment for them because they're used to being swimming you know, hundreds of miles, and they're stuck in tanks. Anyway, uh, they, uh, this group of protesters, I decided to go over and see what they were doing. And uh, Steve Hendy, at that time, he had an organization called the Chicago Animal Rights Coalition. Um, and uh, he was uh, on the stairwell leading up to the, the Shedd Aquarium, and he was confronting one of the employees in a very loud manner. <laughs> He was, and I was, I was very impressed with his fervor. He was really, you know, going at it, and and this is an ongoing trait of his. Uh, and as his uh, uh, wife, uh, who is deceased now, once said, he can't help it. He feel he feels so strongly that, uh, you know, about his his cause that he can't he can't, you know, stop you know <laughs> his actions. Um, Anyway, uh, so I was obviously very impressed with, with what he was doing, and I did join on you know, some of their protests, and eventually I did go to other protests with the, uh, the Chicago Animal Rights Coalition, which later uh, became, uh, when he, let, he decided to change the name to Shark, which means showing animals respect and kindness. Now, there was still another organization that, that uh, came out, which was the Chicago uh, coalition for animal rights, which was active until very recently, actually. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, now with uh, Jim Phillips, I had not, uh, unfortunately, I would never had the good fortune of, of meeting him. Uh, he died in 2001, but uh, his autobiography um, had come out. Uh, he, had, he had written an autobiography uh, under the name of Ray Fox, and it, it was called Raising Cain. <laughs> and of course, I think you all know Raising Cain uh, is an idiom for saying, you know, causing a disturbance, but he, uh, he, he spelled the name Cain, K-A-N-E, which was the, it is the, the county in which he was undertaking all of his activities. Um, so as I said, I, I never had the good fortune of meeting him, but I was, I did have the good fortune of meeting um, uh, Patricia Torrance, who had actually edited his autobiography and, and was a good friend of his and, and knew a lot of uh, information, was able to provide me with a lot of resources about uh, people that I should contact. And I'm very grateful to her. Um, uh, also, uh, Several of uh, Jim Phillips' uh, uh, relatives, uh, uh, two nieces and a nephew, were kind enough to give me some of their impressions of, of his, of their uncle, uh, Jim. <laughs> and I also had the good fortune of being able to, to talk uh, by phone with Margaret Webb, uh, Jim Phillips' only surviving sibling, 
she was in her 90s at the time when I was doing my research back around 2018, 2019. And uh, she was living down in Arkansas. And uh, she provided some very fond remembrances of, of Jim Phillips when he was a, a young boy, which I thought were very, uh, you know, very nice of her to do. Um, so I obviously, I sent her a copy of the book when, when it got published last year. And unfortunately, two weeks before I, the book came out, she died. She was in, as I said, she was in her 90s. So uh, unfortunately, she didn't get a chance to see the book, but I, she does have you know, children. So I had sent the book and, and they're able to see what, what uh, their uncle Jim had uh, done. Or is, yeah, anyway. Um, now, something that also uh, impressed me was how willing everyone I interviewed uh, was to provide information about their impressions of uh, both uh, Jim Phillips and Steve Hendy. And I think that shows that they admired uh, you know, and respected what both of them uh, were doing. Um, now, I, I did have the good fortune to interview Steve Hendy a couple of times when he was out. And uh, by the way, they're both from, you know, we were doing, starting out their activities in Kane County. Um, and, and I, which was kind of interesting to me. And uh, I, I did have the good fortune of, of interviewing Steve Handy in person a couple of times when he was practicing with his drone. He uses this uh, instrument uh, that he can attach camera equipment to and, and, and he uses that to film what's going on in various activities. Um, okay. Um, and then I did have a, the good fortune of, of being able to interview a couple of the uh, shark investigators, uh, the people that help uh, Steve Handy investigate uh, various uh, activities where cruelty is, is uh, occurring. And uh, one of those, he, he prefers to call them investigators because that's what they do. They, they go out and they investigate what's happening in, in rodeos, uh, you know, bullfights, cockfights, uh, I, you name it. <laughs> I don't think there's an animal that he hasn't fought uh, to protect, uh, you know, ranging from very small ones to, you know, to large, to large ones. As a matter of fact, I received a call from him this afternoon and he's uh, out uh, investigating a, a rodeo that's occurring in Illinois today. And uh, one thing that uh, he used uh, that, is used in rodeos, which is really very cool, uh, is an electric prod. Uh, I happen to have uh, a couple of them here. <laughs> and uh, this is what these rodeo riders use to make the horses buck. And it's a very cool, very cool uh, instrument to use. This one, they can kind of do it where you can't see them do you know. And they use this also to, to try to make them a buck. Um, but um, I, I, did I ask if there was a volunteer to use it? And no, nobody wants to use it. <laughs> um, now, I, the other resources I utilized, uh, one of the main ones was right here in the Aurora Santori Library um, because they have a, a history section and a special section in that uh, dealing with, with Jim Phillips. And uh, I was able to find a lot of you know, information that I was able to use in, in my book. Um, the other place that I, uh, where I was able to get a lot of uh, information was the Little White School Museum in uh, Montgomery, Illinois. Uh, Roger Mateo is the uh, director of that. And they have also a section dealing with, uh, with Jim Phillips, and uh, they provided me with a great deal of resource information. Um, and now, um, slide, uh, I want to show you some of the intrepid actions that were undertaken by uh, these two individuals. Uh, the slide that's on, on the screen now is uh, one that uh, Phillips uh, posted in the, uh, uh, it, in the evening, no, the, actually this was done years later, but, but uh, he, most of his activities were done in the, uh, uh, under the cover of, of darkness. 
where he would hang signs and, or as, as I'm indicated, he'd fill up, you know, the, the uh, sewers that were polluting the Fox River. He did a lot of those uh, activities at night under the, under the cover of darkness, um, which is, and this is one of them. And you can see the Fox signature at the bottom, uh, at the top, that's how he put his signature with the with the F, and then the O is the face of a of a fox, <laughs> and uh, and that's the way you he identified his signs. Now, as I indicated, most of the actions he undertook were were at night under the cover of darkness, and he did have some help of friends, which he indicated. Uh, even actually, some policemen would leave notes for him, telling him. Uh, you know, not to go to certain places, you know, certain companies, because they they had guards you know, out there looking for him. So he he was very, and he had other friends obviously that helped him. Um, and he didn't identify their names in his autobiography because he didn't want to bring any notoriety to them. But um, uh, he did have a lot of people that that helped him. Um, now there was one. The next slide, uh, slide, the next slide shows one of the activities that Jim Fox, uh, Jim Phillips, <laughs> gotta call him Jim Fox, <laughs> Jim Phillips uh, undertook during the, the daytime uh, was when he he posted a sign on the Picasso statue down in front of the Civic Center, and this is in uh, 1971, and uh, the sign says. Um, shows the mayor then, Richard Daly, uh, talking to a U.S. steel official. And uh, at, at that time, uh, the uh, U.S. steel was, you know, sending polluted matter in, into uh, the waterway that entered then and entered Lake Michigan. Uh, so they were, you know, polluting Lake Michigan is what I'm trying to say. And uh, uh, the mayor then, Richard Daly, I said, 1971, he wanted to build an airport out on the lake, on Lake Michigan, and uh, and of course that would have caused a, a lot more pollution in the lake. So on the sign it says uh, that uh, uh, the the U.S. Steel official is telling the mayor daily, "Feel free to use the lake, Dick. We do." So, um, <laughs> but as he was posting the sign, a policeman saw him and told him he had to take the sign down. And so he ran off and the police started chasing him. But fortunately he had some friends that had accompanied him. So they provided a barrier between him and, and the police that were trying to, to you know, run after him. So he was able to escape. But that was one of the few activities, well, I, the only one that I really know of that he did <laughs> during the daytime uh, until he retired uh, as the Fox and started doing uh, environmental education and calling into schools and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, so after a while, obviously he, he had to, you know, stop going, doing at night and, and he decided to start educating, uh, you know, students and other you know, residents about pollution in the, in the Fox River and in the environment. Um, okay, now, let's see, I think, now I'd like to um, bring attention to two sections um, of the book. Um, one is the uh, chapter three, uh, the reenactment of the Joliet Marquette voyage, the, the 1673 voyage down the Mississippi River. And incredible as it may seem, <laughs> uh, Jim Phillips and uh, six other and men that enjoyed canoeing or were concerned about pollution and, and so forth, uh, decided, uh, I still can't get my head around, decided to replicate that 3,000 mile journey uh, from Michigan all the way down to the, uh, uh, the Arkansas River, the mouth of the Arkansas River. And they did it like the original voyagers that it, it took them uh, several months to do this. They, they can't, oh, I'm sorry, the next photo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, I think I missed something here. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I, that's not the one I wanted. To, I'm very sorry. I have to go back a little ways. <laughs> I, I guess I got a little confused here. Uh, actually, this is, this is uh, Steve Hendy uh, rescuing a, 
a pigeon uh, at a, pi a, a pigeon shoot in, uh, in Pennsylvania uh, where they, they hold these uh, really cool events. Uh, and uh, uh, he has been trying to, you know, prevent it. And, and, but he read this pigeon, he was able to rescue. I think you can see the blood on his shirt there. And they were able to save that one. So he's continuing to do that. Although uh, currently he's going after uh, cockfighters. Uh, that's, I don't know if you're aware of what cockfights are, but um, anyway, um, so yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot to show you this that photo. Uh, now the next photo also is of Steve Handy. Um, that's a drone that he uses, uh, that he attaches camera equipment to to, to film what is going on uh, in various uh, uh, events. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot to show, <laughs> forgot to mention these two photos. Okay, um, so. Um, He's, as I indicated, he's still going strong and still hasn't given up. I uh, think he's somewhere in his 60s now, but I don't know if he's going to give up anytime soon. <laughs> and one of his investigators here, Jan and Enoch, is shaking her head that he's not going to give up anytime soon. And like I said, he's investigating rodeo cruelty today. But that, that's the, the drone. Uh, I, when I interviewed him, he was out in Kane County you know, practicing with, with the boat with the drone. Um, okay. Now, um, I think, yeah, this, this next one shows uh, uh, <laughs> when he was attacked actually at a, uh, a pigeon shoot in Pennsylvania. This was quite a few years ago and somebody hit him with the metal part of a leash on his head. Uh, and obviously, fortunately he was not seriously injured even, uh, even though obviously it did cause a, you know, some cuts on his forehead. However, this past year, he was uh, attending a, uh, trying to film in a cockfight. Uh, do you all know what goes on in a cockfight? <laughs> Where they train, you know, these cocks to fight and put them in a area to, and, and let them fight till one of them, you know, dies or, or if it's just badly injured, they throw it back in until one of them is killed and then they just throw throw it in the garbage. That's what that's what they do at cockfight. Well, this happened also uh, in Pennsylvania uh, at a cockfight. By the way, cockfights are illegal in all states. I discovered that. They're, they're illegal, but they're still going on. So when he was attacked this past year, uh, last year, I should say, he was seriously injured and ended up in the hospital. Uh, really with broken rib and other serious injuries. But um, even though these two cockfighters had attacked him there and stolen his drone and other equipment, they didn't know that he had a camera hidden on himself, another camera. So he was a, able to film them. And both of these cockfighters were arrested and, and charged with felonious assault. And one of them was recently uh, sentenced to prison Although he did inform me that the other one got off. He doesn't know why. <laughs> but, but one of them at least is, is in prison. For, so he was hurt seriously this last year. Um, and, uh, and I'm glad that he's doing all right now. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry that I forgot to mention all this. Okay, now this next uh, slide. Okay, this is, uh, as I was starting to tell you about this incredible reenact <laughs> reenactment of the Juliet Marquette, the voyage on the Mississippi that was undertaken by Jim Phillips and, and several other, uh, well, six others. And they uh, dressed in the same kind of outfits that the original 1673 uh, voyagers, you know, uh, Marquette and Juliet uh, would have dressed in some, one, of the, uh, one of those people there that did this re uh, reenactment had researched all the type of outfits and his wife at that time made the, the clothing, made all the clothing for the, for these uh, people that took, went on this uh, three month re uh, reenactment of the Juliet Marquette voyage and from, as I indicated, from Michigan down to the mouth of the Arkansas river. And along the way, uh, and they camped out every night uh, and uh, they were not always near uh, any, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, occupy a residential area. Um, so that it, sometimes they had to do, you know, cook their own meals. And they, and when they were near uh, places that where there's some, uh, you know, towns, uh, although they can't, as I indicated, they camped out every night. They turned their birch bark canoes over and they camped out and ate most of their, and ate their meals, uh, at, uh, you know, on the, cor- on the shore of the, the, um, the, the Fox River. And sometimes the local residents would help you know, bring them food. Uh, but they, when they were near uh, some areas where there were uh, some towns, they, they gave these presentations um, and sang French voyager songs, like the ones that you know, were, would have been known by the, uh, back in 1673. And uh, Jim Phillips is the one giving a speech here. He gave a very powerful speech as uh, and as if some, uh, one of the original voyagers from 1673 would have given it in 1973 as to what had happened to the Fox River in the 300 years since that original voyage in 1673. Uh, they wanted to bring attention to you know the pollution in the Fox River and uh, so forth. And uh, he gave a very powerful speech. He was known to to give very powerful speeches and, and, and uh, when he wrote articles in, in, for the newspaper and so forth, uh, he wrote very uh, you know, impassioned, impassioned speeches. Um, so anyway, that to me, that was one of the most interesting uh, chapters that I wrote about and I learned a lot. And uh, the other section that for me was, was really rewarding uh, to research and write about uh, was the afterward, where I, uh, first of all, I make some comparisons of, or the commonalities between Steve Hendy and, and Jim Phillips, uh, at the very, uh, you know, in pa- passion, in passion people. They had a, a one cause that they devoted their lives, you know, devoted their lives to. And um, so I, I did bring out some commonalities between uh, Steve Hendy and Jim Phillips. And then I bring in Henry David Thoreau, the famous naturalist, uh, the, ninth, the uh, 19th century famous um, naturalist, author, and philosopher. And um, I make some comparisons uh, with, with both uh, Jim Phillips and Steve Hendy. And the reason I, I did this was all the results of a single comment made by a well-known Aurora Beacon News columnist, Charles Ward, over 50 years ago. Uh, he, had, he knew who the Fox was and, this, and he, he had written a number of articles in the Aurora Beacon News about, about the Fox's activities. And in one of these, these uh, articles, at the very end of the, the article, he said, "If if uh, Thoreau were alive today, he would be the fox." Now he didn't, you know, didn't go into detail, but obviously uh, Henry David Thoreau was concerned about the environment and so forth. Um, but I decided to do more research. I mean, I, I had read Walden. I, you know, I think most people would probably have had read Walden. But I, I, when I started doing more research about Henry David Thoreau, I found some amazing. <laughs> Not, not just the care about environment, but his whole, Jim Phillips' whole life from his childhood on up. And uh, I, I don't have time to mention all of those, but I just, I was so amazed the type of upbringing they had, you know, from very small towns. Because when Jim Phillips was born in 1930, um, was he, Oswego, I think, or Montgomery at Oswego, they had maybe about 3,000 or, or maybe you no know, less than that population. Um, and you know how they used to take walks or, around along the river, and they cared about the. There were so many things, not just about their interest in protecting the environment, but his whole, you know, his whole life, his whole childhood. And then uh, I also found some some um, amazing things that uh, he obviously cared, uh, I guess, about the animals. Also, uh, uh, Thoreau did. And some of the comments he made made, made me think of, uh, of Steve Hendy, uh, like, you know, the squirrel you kill in jest still dies in earnest. And there were a number of other. And the fact that 
Oh, by the way, uh, Steve Handy has, in addition to being assaulted, he he was arrested for for uh, trespassing, I think, and in, in a, somewhere in the <laughs> in a forest preserve or so, doing something, uh, and it served to some time. And of course, Henry David Thoreau also was arrested, and you know because he he disagreed with something that the government was doing at that time. So uh, I saw some other you know commonalities. Uh, not not just because what he, some of the comments he made about animals and so forth, but but also um, the fact that they were willing to sacrifice their freedom in order in order to get their you know get their point across. Um, okay, now I let's see. Uh, I think that's the final photo. And um, if anyone, and I think that ends my talk. If anyone has any questions they would like to ask me, I'd be glad to, to answer them. Anyone? <laughs> well, I thank you again for coming here. I appreciate uh, your, your attending, and uh, I hope that, that you uh, leave here admiring both uh, Jim Phillips and Steve Handy for what they have done to try to protect the environment and, our, and the animals that, that uh, live in the Okay, thank you. Thank you so much.